we're going to call the roll, and then I believe I have an opening statement. I got to read here. Let me find it. Um, there we go. Okay, here's. Okay, okay. Um, you want to call the roll then? Mayor Bai. Okay, Marlene, you sound pretty muffled. Um, is the microphone close to you, or is yeah. it far away? It's far. yeah. You sound you sound like yeah. It, you don't you, you don't have a clear um. Yeah, it's not very clear. Can you hear me now? Uh -uh. Recording. Yeah, I mean, progress. I can hear you, but it sounds like this when you talk. So. That sound muffled. Okay, that's a little bit better. That's a little better. I'll speak louder. Okay. Okay. Mayor Bud Shaw. I'm here. Yes. Vice Mayor Svetchin. Here. Uh, Commissioner Goldman. Here. Commissioner Viscara. She's out. And Commissioner Lama. Here. Excellent. Everybody's here. Okay. I have an opening statement since we have another virtual meeting I have to read. So I'm going to read my opening statement. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for joining us tonight. Please ensure that your microphone is muted to avoid interrupting the proceedings tonight. Individuals who want to speak on any item on the agenda are asked to raise to use the raise hand function, which can be located by the following these steps. If you're using an iPad, tap the center of your screen, tap on the three dots located at the top right hand corner and select raise hand. If you're using a desktop, click on participants at the bottom of your screen, which opens a side window listing all the participants. On the participant screen, click on the three dots located on the bottom left hand corner and select raise hand. If you called in and are listening on your phone, dial star nine to raise your hand and the city clerk will call on you based on the last four digits of your phone number. When called upon, please state your name and address for the record. Speakers may also use the chat function to submit their comments and questions. And these chats are only available to the commission and the host or chair will read it into the record. The chat function is located at the bottom of the screen. So please make sure to type in your name and address for the record. Speakers are asked to speak to the issues, make comments concise and to the point, and refrain from making duplicate comments, and all speakers will be limited to three minutes. If you exceed the three-minute allotment, the chair will advise you to finish your comment, and if you don't adhere to the chair's advice, your microphone will be turned off. So, okay, with that, we will start our meeting. Um, who is, who's kicking it off? Is it Kathy? Are you, are you good? Okay, Kathy's driving, Kathy's driving tonight, so thank goodness. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, Honorable Thank Mayor, you, Vice, Vice Mayor, and City Commissioners. After almost two years, we are very excited to be entering the final stages of our rebranding project. So this is a citywide rebranding project. When we first started this project back in 2019, our goal was to create a brand that was co-created with our community, something that was based on research. So we spent a lot of time, as we remember in our first workshop, discussing the research that we did, including focus groups, um, phone surveys, and online surveys to really get a gauge on the community and the vision for the future. We also wanted something that was unique to us and representative of all components of our city. So including our residents, our unique location, our natural environment, the built environment, our city services, and our service first approach to our serving our community. And it needed to be something that created excitement, something that was forward thinking, ambitious, but realistic and true to who we are, something that we could really embody in every touch point and in every interaction with our stakeholders. So with this project, we've really had the opportunity to create something alongside our community that will have a lasting impact, something that will reposition us in a way that will have a significant positive influence on our community and will accurately represent us for the exceptional city that we truly are. So throughout this process, our research and feedback from the community through our focus groups and our surveys was truly the driving force behind what you'll see tonight and all of the brand elements that are being proposed this evening. Since our last workshop a couple of months ago, we've been working diligently with Jacoba Creative, our rebranding firm, to explore various options for all of our branding elements. And this includes our core values, our mission statement, vision statement, tagline, logo, colors, and fonts. We've, we've worked with various iterations, craftily, carefully crafting each piece of our new brand. And we've also taken all the feedback that we've received from our individual one-on-one -on -one meetings, 
with each of you, as well as each member of our Public Arts Advisory Committee. And we've worked with Jacoba to incorporate a lot of these suggestions that we received to really present the best recommendation possible. And like I said, this really has been a long time coming for us. It's been almost two years of work and I really must commend Jacoba Creative and their entire team for their exceptional work with this project. They really have gone above and beyond and their dedication to really getting something that is very representative of us and something that really will propel us into the future and something that we can all be very proud of them. They really have left no stone unturned and really explored every single comment that came their way, every suggestion that we've received today and um, have taken all that information to put together something that will be very special to us. So I'm very confident tonight that what you will see is really the truly best, very best recommendation for us. So with all that being said, if there are no questions, I would like to turn over the presentation to Louisa and Paul from Jacoba Creative. And after the, their presentation, we will open it up for comments from the public. I believe we've received a couple of public comments already and then open it up for discussion with the commission. Okay, Louisa and Paul, nice to see you again. And likewise. Very nice to see you again. Okay. A pleasure. All right, the virtual Zoom stage is yours. All right, Fantastic. thank you so much. Give me a moment while I pull up. Do I share screen? All right. Second here. Okay. Fantastic. All right. And can everyone see? Okay. Always the top. <laughs> Fantastic. Great. I'm just going to click here. Sorry, here. So, again, it's great to see, see everybody again. Thank you for having us. Most of you know me already. I'm Paul Jacober, the owner and creative director of Jacober Creative. And this is Luisa Jimenez, our Director of Marketing and Brand Strategy. I was going to say for only a couple more hours. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so today we are we're here. Um, we're going to take you through the process, starting with the recap, uh, the research recap, the brand positioning, uh, how we got to the core values and how those led to the mission statement and vision statement, all the way to the tagline and into the finale, the grand finale, the logo. So this phrase from the RFP perfectly encapsulated what our overall goal was for the project. The goal of this rebranding campaign is to create a unified and identifiable look that residents can connect with, businesses want to work with, and employees are proud to represent. And with this in mind, we carefully crafted our research strategy. So we decided to take this one step further and really um, break this up into five distinct objectives. Um, the first being to create a unified brand, that a brand identity that reflects the evolution of the city and its future growth, to connect the local government with the community it serves, to inspire resident engagement with the city, both in person and online, to attract potential businesses and investors to the area, to position the city of Sunny Isles Beach as a safe, responsive, and sought after community. So with all this in mind, it's important to never lose sight of really what we're striving for. And so um, we're just gonna do a quick research recap, um, of which we already went through in our last um, workshop together. So this should be just a refresher for everyone present. Um, so just to begin with, you know, um, our research strategy really uh, encompassed a mix of qualitative and quantitative research. For qualitative research, um, we um, conducted three focus groups comprising of city of employees, local business owners and operators, and residents. And really the goal of this was for us to be able to gather these really distinct and unique groups um, and be able to really gain a deeper insight into the city and their very unique perspectives. For our quantitative portion, um, a phone survey was uh, fielded to proactively reach out to Sunny Isles Beach residents, while an online survey in three languages was also put out for residents, businesses, and visitors to submit their input. Now, we received a total of 941 responses, 
responses, which received um, a level of 95% of confidence um, and a margin of error of 3.2%. So what does that mean? We feel very confident about what our research findings were able to tell us at the end of the day. Oops, there we go. And so coming into this project, there were numerous concerns expressed about the perceived divide between residents on the west and east sides of Collins Avenue. And we were well aware of the many differences between the two sides of, the, of this beach side community. Uh, these concerns resurfaced during the focus group phase of the research, but something we took away and thought was, very, was a very unique take on it uh, was from a resident. where he enthusiastically and sincerely spoke about the sense of flow between the city and that nobody misses out. Residents get the sunrise and some get the sunset. And it was a very refreshing and neighborly way to look at it. Um, in addition to that, um, one of the things that also surfaced were that there were four main pillars that really everyone from the focus groups coalesced around. Um, the landscape, really, which you know meant access to the beach and the intercoastal, as well as the parks and recreation, the pier, as Paul mentioned, sunrises and sunsets, the people, the fact that the city is very family oriented, um, it's friendly, welcoming, diverse, and multi multicultural, and then it has a very distinct international flavor. Um, the location, um, it's conveniently located near major highways with easy access to both Miami-Dade and um, Broward County uh, for airport and entertainment venues. And then, of course, the quality of life. Now, this is something that kept on coming up again and again. Um, the fact that it's safe, clean, you know, kids um, are free to explore and play. The school is A-rated. Um, there's accessibility to government and elected officials. Um, and that really that there are events and amenities for all age groups. And when we further sort of probed on sort of the defining characteristics of the city, um, so there were, our respondents really pointed to the following words, that it was feminine, colorful, luxurious, fun, but also casual. So we really took that into account when building out sort of the basis and the foundation of our brand identity um, and how that was going to be constructed um, in all of the supporting elements, which just brings us to the brand positioning. So as we had mentioned before, you know, the city has high approval ratings and really a lot of strong municipal assets, but what it was really lacking and the reason we're here today is because it didn't really have a strong single identity in the public mind. Um, and so, you know, we see that as the room for improvement for our both branding and marketing purposes. Um, and this is where having, you know, a strong brand positioning really comes into play. Um, and so what we want to do is um, sort of construct a framework for that from the beginning. So understanding, you know, who the brand positioning, what the brand positioning is, who it speaks to, where it stands, and what it offers. So our primary target are current and potential residents. Our secondary targets are investors, businesses, and visitors. Our category um, is in the oceanfront communities in Miami-Dade County. And the benefits that the city offers um, are the beautiful beach, the safe surroundings, family-friendly parks and recreation, progressive urban planning, and world-class architecture. So to wrap that all up in a nice little package, um, our main message is that the city of Sunny Isles Beach is a South Florida oceanfront community that offers the pillars of a quality, upscale lifestyle for all citizens, a beautiful landscape, a safe and family-friendly environment, culturally rich municipal amenities, and a progressive urban vision. So that being said, you know, this is really, as I mentioned, the framework for all of the supporting elements that really make up that Sunny Isles Beach brand. Um, and so we'll dive in from the brand positioning into the core values. And really, you know, it's so important to reiterate that, you know, it's important to have clear and defined set of core values for every organization, whether it's municipal or commercial um, organization. Um, the terms that we are presenting to you today, so there's six core values. These were terms that were repeated time and time again during our focus groups. And we actually saw that these were actually further bolstered um, in our observations of how they were already present in municipal uh, initiatives. So you'll see, you know, it really 
all really surrounds, you know, that notion of quality, both in quality of life and, you know, the quality of the offerings that the city um, extends to its residents and its visitors and its uh, businesses. Um, and then it branches out into safety, innovation, inclusivity, sustainability, and of course, integrity. So as we mentioned, you know, these really inform, you know, our mission and vision statements as well, um, as well as the, um, tagline that we'll be talking about, and then the brand identity that we'll be revealing in the logo. So mission statement. So it's important to understand what a mission statement is and why it's important. So mission statements define why your business exists and why it's important, including the problems you're, that you're aiming to solve. It explains an organization's plan for the present based on what it wants to achieve. So really, you know, in the case of municipal entities, you know, what we do is consider this as like our North Star or guide for employees on what their day-to-day -day goals are, while also serving as a brand promise for what citizens can expect from their government. And for the city of Sunny Isles, the city of Sunny Isles Beach's mission is to enrich the quality of life for all by providing excellent service building on its reputation as a culturally rich and inclusive community, cultivating a safe and harmonious environment where residents, businesses, and visitors can thrive. So while that is sort of the North Star of our day-to-day, -day, that sort of brings us to our vision statement, which is a little bit, it's distinct in that it is creative, ambition, ambitious, um, and really should have a logical connection to the mission. But you know, rather than being sort of that roadmap, that day-to-day -day roadmap, it's the destination um, that's based on the mission. This is where you want to get to. So vision statements declare where your organization wants to be in the future. Uh, and it's framed in an aspirational, forward-thinking manner. Vision statements help organizations make strategic decisions, aligning efforts with goals. And for the city of Sunny Isles Beach, it is to be the most coveted oceanfront community in all of South Florida, known for its exceptional quality of life, responsive municipal government, dynamic and inclusive community, and commitment to preserving its natural environment. So with all that being said, um, sort of those are sort of the, the basics and the framework for, for what the city's brand is and what it you know, strives to do and achieve, um, you know, both in the short and the long term. And now we get a little bit more into the creative aspects of what that brand identity is and how we're shaping it to be a little bit more public. Um, so in tagline what makes a good tagline. So this is always a fun exercise because, you know, this is sort of always very highly subjective. Um, but some, you know, key things to keep in mind when evaluating what makes a tagline successful is that it should be simple, straightforward, and honest. Um, it should sort of clearly defini uh, define it from your competitive set. Um, it should reflect a benefit of what is offered, whether functional or emotional. Um, and it should be very brief. So brevity lends itself to memorability. And sometimes it's worth taking a look to see what the sort of competition in, in air quotes is doing. Um, some of these may be instantly recognizable like the Magic City. Um, others are generic to the point of anonymity, um, but overall you can see that municipal tagline options can really run the gamut. For the city of Sunny Isles Beach, we feel strongly that the best tagline that captures its essence and its unique value proposition is the height of living. The height of living has roots in the feedback that we received from the resident focus group. They unequivocally pointed to the quality of life that they experienced in Sunny Isles as being their main draw and what keeps them hooked. So this tagline really, you know, as I mentioned, boldly encompasses what, you know, so many new and longtime residents, you know, point to as that enduring attraction of the city. And it also sort of obliquely references the landscape of high rises that make the city of Sunny Isles Beach such a uniquely distinct skyline. And so the drum roll, I guess, to the logo. So from the height of living tagline, we paired it with a modern and contemporary visual that would personify the new slogan, embody the city's ethos, and illustrate the world-renowned skyline.
We created an icon that had a purposely upward trajectory. We married the rays of the sun in a unique way that gives a nod to the skyline, but also projects out in a joyful and energetic manner. The icon represents a bridge between the sunrises and the sunsets referenced in the research findings and symbolizes the buildings that make up the city's uh, beautiful silhouette. The lines have a skyward direction representing the progress and the quality of the community. It's, so it's something that has a visual versatility where the nameplate can really hug the icon or stand separately underneath. Uh, the typeface, a clean, straightforward type, sort of the epitome of, of sophistication and effortless elegance is a sort of a no fuss, no muss approach. And the top four colors from the research efforts were blue, green, yellow, and white. And with collaboration from the Sunny Isles Branding Committee, these specific colors were deemed best to really represent the new visuals. And the next step is really to showcase the new logo on marketing materials, collateral, or any a media material used to promote the city's objectives or services. This includes everything from print materials like posters and flyers to digital content like the website and social media, basically anything you can use to communicate the city's brand message. And the application of a logo, everything it lands on, it adds a sense of an elevated image. It creates a narrative of a unified brand identity, showcasing the evolution of a city and its future growth. From uniforms to casual attire, great visuals are the best way to inspire resident engagement with the city, to brand yourself, to convey that you are reputable, upscale, and responsive to the community's needs. It travels from the beach, to the boardroom, from your desk, to other promotional objects. It shines, no pun intended, on the digital applications like the sample mock-up for a website, to social media posts. And ultimately this logo shows your, represents and shows your commitment. It conveys a sense of municipal and personal pride that will trickle throughout the community and beyond. Thank you. Wow. Okay, great job. Um, really good job, I know. Yeah, let's give him a hand. Thank um, you. I personally, you know, I was telling Kathy the other day, you know, I've been through a bunch of these and it's like an exorcism for me, you know? I just, it's really hard. <laughs> It's really hard, and I rarely like the final pick or anything like this, but I really think um, you guys clearly did a, did a lot of research, um, and I think you really captured, you know, you, 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 you clearly captured, like, the essence of, I think, what, what, what people think and feel. And I also, I also, I like the reference to living, you know, because, um, you know, I, I don't know, some, some of our surrounding municipalities, I'm not sure about evolving senses and things of that nature, but... Um, but but I but I like the reference a lot. So okay, let me start with um, um, Marlene. Do we have um, do we have some any comments from the public that need to be read into the record? Yes, we do. I'm going to try to speak loud so you guys can hear me. Okay, go ahead. Um, this one is from Peter Lavella. Yep, we'll be yep. yep. He said, we all met round table before the pandemic. I believe I might have commented. If it ain't broke, then don't fix it. However, since the lockdown, I did think about it and have come up with an idea I'd like to introduce for tonight's meeting. Welcome to Sunny Isles Beach, a place to call home. Welcome to Sunny Isles Beach, proud to call home. And he said, note, if you're reaching for the opposite appeal, then drop the word beach. Welcome to Sunny Isles, Isle of Enchantment. We have a second. Peter's comment. great. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Peter's a special guy. He's very artistic. But Peter, the train left the station on this one. So <laughs> <laughs> so we're already, so the train's already arrived. So, okay, Marlene, go ahead to the next one. Angel Venegas or Venegas. He said, moved to Sunny Isles Beach on October 2020, 
My wife and I love the place. I read the branding report and loved it. A lot of good information, especially for a newbie. Although a newbie, I would like to let you know of some of my observations, and I see and feel the growing pain, but hear and hope they help. The sidewalks on, the, on Collins Avenue are very narrow and very obstructed with utility poles and other objects which could be avoided with easement and put on adjacent location. Understand cost. Um, then he has an asterisk. Residents should be able to have access to those fancy restaurants, resorts at affordable prices. I don't see that. Thank you. Those are the only two we have. Okay, is that it? Well, there was one, uh, Irina and Lee Carlin, um, but their comments were just no comment. First time new resident. Okay, okay. Thank you there for putting them in the record if they reached out. Okay, and I don't see anything on the chat, so um, I'm going to. This is this isn't really an official meeting, so it's not like a public hearing. But I'm going to close it, and I'm going to kind of roundtable the commission. So, um, um, Alex, you you, you, you want to? Do you have any comments? Yeah, I think a great job. I applaud you all. Uh, I know it takes a lot of work and a lot of time, uh, a lot of brainstorming back and forth. So I think uh, the, log the logo is great. I love the logo. Uh, the tagline is good. There's just one thing I have. Um, I don't know about the word height, and I uh, discussed this with Susan and, and Kathy. Um, but that's pretty much it. I mean, I think that you nailed it. Um, not to say that the tagline is not the right one. I think it's the right one and what you're trying to express with it. I think it pretty encompasses everything pretty much, but um, I'm a little bit doubtful about or apprehensive about the word type. That's it for me. Thanks, Alex. Uh, you're welcome. Um, uh, Dana. I'm very happy. The logo is outstanding. It's really Sorry. a winner. Dana. winner. Dana, can I interject? Sorry, I, I, I was thinking, I forgot to say that. I, I was thinking more along the lines of the joy of uh, living instead of the height of living, something like that. I don't know. So that's kind of like my, my idea. Yeah. Sorry, Dana. Got it. <laughs> Not at all. All right, Dana, go ahead. Uh, the uh, the logo is outstanding. I got to tell you, you guys really, really nailed it with that logo. It is absolutely sensational. I'm extremely happy with the logo. Big improvement on the color selection. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Took those comments, some of those comments to heart from the commission, I suppose. And uh, the vast improvement on the uh, on the color scheme. Uh, loved the mission statement from the get-go and the vision. Um, I think actually, I think the tagline is actually kind of clever. I love that double entendre. And, and I think it's very... I think it's just, I think it's great. I think it's really cosmopolitan, it's chic, it's just everything, just, it, you just, you knocked it out of the park. Really excellent job, very happy. Very good, very good thank, effort. Thank, thank you, Dana, that's great. Vice Mayor. Um, I wanna agree with Commissioner Goldman. I think you did a phenomenal job. I, I worked in advertising many, many years and I know how challenging this is. And I will say that I was a little nervous you were presenting the, the findings at first, but, uh, and when uh, Kathy presented the, the tagline, I had the same kind of reaction as Alex. Uh, you know, the, the word height kind of was like a punch to the gut. And Kathy said, just let it sink in. Is what and, it is. <laughs> and exactly, and I, and, I, and I thought to myself, well, it's honest. And, um, you know, and, and then I thought, how does it translate? And so I actually, you know, maybe uh, I, I asked my mother, who speaks mostly Russian, I said, and I translated the word height. And I said, what does this mean to you? And she said, well, it means phenomenal, great, wonderful. And I said, okay. So, it, you know, it, it translates well, at least I know into Russian. And then when you presented it right now, and I saw the tagline again, I had the opposite feeling. It, it was, it, it uplifted me. I didn't feel, you know, like it was bringing me down. So you did... I mean, really phenomenal job. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate nice. that, the comment. Thank you. So um, I know where Alex is coming from, but I also feel that we have what we have, you know, and the fact is, the fact is 
you know, it, I don't think that we can try to satisfy everybody. And, and, and I think the objection, the objection is, the objection really isn't as much to the buildings by certain people as it is just to the, to their perception of overdevelopment. You know, I think, I think most everybody in the city will agree the buildings are beautiful in their own right, because, you know, we've got some of the best architects in the world and what have you. So I think, I think it's a reasonably vocal minority that would get rankered by the notion of height being in the tagline. And to Dana's point, it's double entente at the end of the day. Frankly, if you're from outside of the city, you're not, you're going to think it's the height of living to, to vice mayor's point. You're going to think it's, you know, it's, it's the, it's just, you know, it's the pinnacle of living. You're not going to, you're not going to even pick up on the double entente until you get here and it still may not dawn on you. So I think it works so well. And I love the fact that you can use the logo, you know, you can, you can change it for different applications, like the bag where the lines went all the way up to the top of the bag. That's really cool. I mean, it's really interesting. And again, and again, it can be interpreted a bunch of different ways. It can be interpreted as rays of sunshine. It can be interpreted as a, you know, as a bill. I, I, I get that. And I think, and clearly, you know, that's not lost on us. So I, I think you nailed it. I, you know, like, you know, I usually say my opinion doesn't matter on this kind of stuff because I have like very little marketing sense, you know, but I have gone through these exercises on a number of occasions with, you know, one global firm, one national firm, a couple local firms. And frankly, um, you know, so I have a little, a little bit of background in, in what you go through to try to, to try to come up with this stuff. And um, I think you did a great job. So I frankly wouldn't change a thing. And, you know, and I would say that, um, you know, the whole team, the effort was good. It was very inclusive of the community. I like the confidence interval. Um, I think, you know, we're going to have some naysayers. It's always, you know, everything we do on the commission, we're going to upset half the public. So, you know, we tend to try to, we tend to try to work from the heart, I think, just because we know that we're never going to make everybody happy. But at the same time, um, in a situation like this, you know, I think you were, you know, the commission did not act independently on this. You know, you, you went out to the public, you, you went through an exhaustive exercise, you adapted for COVID, and you came up with a great solution So, and a great work product. So I assume we're going to get a style guide and all that kind of stuff along with everything. And yeah, so that'll be great. So so I'm good. I'm good. Um, Thank you. Th this is a work. Yeah, this is a workshop, right? We're not. This, this is a workshop, not a meeting. Correct. OK, that's what I thought. So this is just um, just to get some comment. OK, I think I see I see some Q&A down here. Um, okay. Um, is, is this, um, um, I can't see the name. It's Fabio. Let me see here. Is, is it Fabio? Yeah. Okay. I just see fab dot, dot, dot. Okay. As a design professional, I very much like the logo. My only comment is the line that the lines represent the ocean look too much like a cross rock rather than the ocean. And, um, so I don't think they, I don't know, you know, I think they represent the rays of the sun and maybe so. I don't know that they represent a, um, a crosswalk, but, um, but, but, you know, we appreciate the comment. Maybe you guys want to speak to the, to the symbolism of the lines. I was going to say, and that it was never intended to be a literal representation of the ocean at all. Um, I think it became a little bit symbolizing more of that because of the placement of the blue there, but it was always really about the sunrises and the sunsets and this upward trajectory. Yeah. Right. And it's also with, you know, any sort of successful brand is that you imbue your own set of, you know, your references and your frame of thinking yeah. into it. And so we love that, you know, everyone takes their own little perspective of, of this, this branding into, into their, their perspective. And frankly, if, if, the, if people interpret it as a crosswalk, maybe it's like a public safety symbolism or something, which we could really, which we could use, which we could use in our, in our reputation. So, um, so, okay. Um, are there any other comments? I don't see any from the public. Um, oh, I just see another one popped up here. Okay. But the sun rises and sunsets on sunny aisles occur over water. So thank you. They do. They do. But again, I think what, what we're hearing is that it's symbolic for how you interpret it. So thank you. Um, okay. Um, any, any other comments from the staff? Does anybody else have anything they want to add? Kathy, you want to, you, you want to mop it up? 
Absolutely. So the next steps, we're going to work with Paul and Louisa to wrap this up into a branding style guideline, the entire campaign, all of that launch to hopefully launch this internally, um, develop everybody internally as our own brand ambassadors, fully endorse this, and then bring this into fruition to the public in early fall. Great. Great. All right. All right, you guys. Great job. Thank you very, very much. And kudos to the staff for pulling it together. Kathy and team, you guys did a great job. You know, we really appreciate it. So, and, um, and, and our, and our, and our Mauricio stand in Marlene, you, you, you did very good. We got to get you a headset though. That's yeah, all, yeah, you know, definitely. you know, you and Claudia need to share the same headset, you, you know, that new headset we're going to get. So um, Susan, did you want to add anything? Are- I did. Thank you. Um, I really just wanted to um, thank all of you also and the residents that are watching, some that were in the focus group or um, watching on TV or um, attending tonight. And uh, Fabio, thank you. He's one of our PAC members, so he has been very involved. And a lot of his feedback um, was shared with Jacober. Um, But all of your feedback... Kathy has a list of questions and she, you know, they went through all of them and they did a lot of work to turn this around really quick. So really appreciate everybody's input and effort. And that's how we made, you know, something that was co-created. Um, and just a reminder, it'll be on the July agenda in person for you to approve. Excellent. Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks. All right. Great job. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks everybody. See ya. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.